Hello. My name is Charles McNamara. I am the Director of Operations at Guardian Group Services. As a FLSD for over two decades, I have some helpful tips that I want to share with you. I am here in my laid-back shirt, but your training will be serious. You are there to protect life and property. I am here in this video to help guide you through the FDNY Fire and Life Safety Director on-site process. This video shall outline the three steps to the FDNY process to become a certified Fire and Life Safety Director. The three steps are two. First take the 31-hour, fire, non-fire, active shooter and medical emergency training class and pass the school exams. Second take and pass the FDNY computer-based tests at FDNY headquarters at 9 Metrotech in Brooklyn, New York. Then the third and final step is to complete the FDNY on-site exam with the inspector at your facility. This is scheduled by your company or building management. As the FLSD you will need to know the day-to-day -day activities of your property. You must know the tenants, guests, visitors, and contractors. This is a very proactive position in a building. The Fire and Life Safety Director license is site-specific. It is valid for three years. If a FLSD goes to another location, they will need to take a new on-site exam at the new work location. Only authorized personnel, designated by the building owner, are allowed to schedule an on-site F89 or T89 exam. There is a fee to schedule these exams. Candidates cannot schedule their own exams. The on-site exam testing area. This will be one-on-one. -on -one. In order to maximize all candidates' testing performance, the candidates or the supervisor must arrange a suitable environment for the FDNY inspector to administer the on-site exam. A suitable testing environment includes but is not limited to adequate room lighting, adequate ventilation, comfortable seating and clean work surfaces for the candidates to take notes and answer questions, minimum noise and no distractions during the exam, and alarms and announcements will be sounded at various points during this exam. There are mandatory and important questions in the on-site exam. Candidates must receive a score of at least 70% and pass all mandatory questions and not fail more than one important question. The average testing time of the on-site exam is approximately 4 hours. The testing environment should be expected to be occupied for at least 5 hours. All FLSDs must know and understand the four emergency concepts which are Always make sure to call 911 during an emergency. Shelter in place, which means stay where you are. In building relocation, move away from windows and go towards the center or COR of the building. Partial evacuation. Or a full building evacuation. You will need to know legal requirements such as Local Law 5 of 1973 Local Law 16 of 1984 Local Law 41 of 1978 Local Law 58 of 1987 Local Law 26 of 2004 And the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 The fire safety EAP plan must be immediately implemented and building occupants must be directed to shelter in place, relocate within the building, partially evacuate, or fully evacuate whenever such action is deemed necessary to ensure the safety of building occupants. The building owner submits the plans to FDNY, the FDNY reviews and approves plans or makes recommendations to update, and the FLSD on site is the one who shall implement the plan during a fire or non-fire emergency. In the absence of the FLSD, the authority of implementing the plan must be assumed by a deputy FLSD. If FLSD or deputy FLSD is not required to be on duty, the authority must be assumed by an building evacuation supervisor. The announcement must be repeated or updated on a frequent basis to inform and reassure building occupants. The mandatory questions are building specific where a practical demonstration is required. You must really know your building. Walk the floors, stairwells, check the roof, basement, and tenant spaces prior to the exam. 
The important questions are generic questions, tasks, or the actions that must be explained as part of the answer to a question or scenario. You really should think in every scenario what can happen in a fire or a non-fire emergency. The inspectors only record candidates' verbal answers but do not grade the exams. The on-site exam will be graded by a third-party unit at the FDNY. The grading process may take from six to eight weeks. The exam results, pass or fail, will be sent to email address provided by the candidate as well as their employer. The FLSD will be required to know the duration and frequency of fire and life safety staff training. They must know the requirements for deputy FLSDs, brigade members, building evacuation supervisors, floor wardens, and searchers. These are people who will assist in an emergency situation. The FLSD will also need to know the many different certificates of fitness. These are listed in the FLSD booklet and FDNY website. The on-site exam is broken into three sections. First, the general building knowledge, second, the fire component, and third, the non-fire component. You will need to know your building fire safety EAP plan and building information card. We shall break this down even further. Grab a notepad and take notes. Candidates will be required to answer site-specific questions regarding the following topics. The information from the building information card, building information, building statistics, stairways, elevators, ventilation, utilities, fire protection systems, hazardous materials, and communications. Discuss the following four basic topics. A general overview of the building's FDNY plan. For non-fire emergency concepts, EAP concepts. Duties for fire emergency. Duties for non-fire emergency. During this section, every candidate will be presented with a specific fire scenario indicating there is fire-related emergency. The candidate will be assigned as the only FLSD on duty. The inspector will read each part of the scenario and then wait for the candidate's responses before proceeding to the subsequent parts of the scenario. The candidate is allowed to take notes while the inspector is reading the scenario. Inspectors will provide paper for the candidate to take notes. The candidate will be directed by the inspector as to which sections are allowed for notes taking. The candidate will be given 15 minutes to prepare his, her responses on the paper that the inspector provides. When stating answers, the candidate should assume to be the only fire and life safety director on duty and responsible for the building. The candidate should state all the actions that are required to be taken. The candidate must be as specific as possible and must not assume that actions were taken by others. Candidates should explain all their actions in detail from the beginning of the incident slash emergency to the very end. During this section, every candidate will be presented with a specific non-fire scenario indicating there is active shooter emergency. During this exam segment, the candidate must assume that the inspector is a building occupant. The candidate must train the building occupants how to respond in case of an active shooter emergency. This building occupant does not have any knowledge of how to respond to the active shooter emergency. The candidates need to verbally train the building occupant and describe all required information specifically and clearly. The candidate should train the occupants in detail so that, upon completion of the training, the occupants will clearly understand what to do in case of an active shooter emergency. Inform the occupants what to expect when law enforcement arrives on scene as they work to stop an active shooter and eliminate the threat. You will need to know how to respond to many different non-fire emergencies, these may not trigger an alarm on your fire command station, these non-fire emergencies are. Biological agent release. Chemical agent release. Gas or carbon release. Explosions and suspicious packages. Civil disturbance. Failure of building utilities. Building damage. Active shooter and medical emergencies. As the FLSD you will need to verbally advise the inspector what you are going to do, step by step. All FLSD candidates must be fully capable of operating the controls of and interpreting the signals of the fire command center. 
Since each fire command center is different, the candidate should obtain an instruction manual on its operation and or training from the manufacturer, installation company, or other qualified persons prior the on-site exam. During this demonstration portion, the candidate must instruct building employees who are posted at or near the fire command center to remain silent while he, she is answering questions or demonstrating the required skills. If any other person answers questions that the candidate is required to answer, instructs the candidate on how to perform the required skills or interferes with the on-site exam in any manner, the candidate will not receive credit for those questions. As an FLSD you will need to know and understand the online and offline status. This should be one of the first things you do when you start your tour. Being online means that if you get a fire alarm the FDNY shall be notified via central station. Know if your building is online with central station, or if you are offline, why you are offline. If you are offline, central station will get a notice, but they will not send FDNY, and someone will have to call and inform 911. You must know and understand the difference between the three types of alarm signals on the panel. Read your panel carefully. The three types are Trouble alarm Supervisory alarm Fire alarm The candidate will be required to demonstrate the following skills that should be performed upon implementation of the FDNY plan. Staff identification Don Apparel Identify all components of the fire alarm panel, operate the key functions of the fire alarm panel, place the system offline and online, acknowledging the signal at the fire alarm panel, silence the fire tones, manual activation of alert tone or alarm tone, simulate failsafe door release, show the ability of controlling fans at the fire command center, and reset the fire command center. Candidates will be required to demonstrate proficiency in the following areas, make all call announcement throughout the building including the stairways and elevators, and make localized announcement to a specific floor. Now we shall go over the required announcements. Remember to take your time and speak slow and clearly. As an FLSD you will be required to make announcements over the public address system. May I have your attention please? May I have your attention please? This is your FLSD speaking and we have received an alarm on the floor. Will the wardens and deputy wardens please investigate and respond back by warden phone? Floor searchers please assist and check your designated areas as well. Then repeat it a second time so everyone is aware of the message announcement. Remember to remain calm in an emergency and call 911. Remember to recall the elevators and to shut down the HVAC and start to get your keys and plans ready. Implement the fire safety EAP plan and use the public address system. You are responsible to make announcements and you must get information and share information. The first responders will be looking for you upon their arrival. Have someone meet them and guide them at your work site. You must also know how to reset your system. You can acknowledge and you can silence your system, but you can only reset the system once the FDNY says you can. Once again do not reset the system until FDNY gives the all clear. This is a very important thing to know for your exam. You may want to ask your supervisor to bring in the fire alarm vendor for a review of your system before your on-site exam. During this section of the on-site exam, the candidate will be required to Perform the Phase I Emergency Elevator Recall Perform the Phase II Emergency In-Car Operation including the following, closing the elevator door, cancelling the floor selection, and opening the door utilizing the built-in safety feature. Perform the Independent Slash Manual Mode Operation inside the elevator. Establish two-way communications between Fire Command Center and Elevator Car. Inability to perform any of these actions will result in a failure. It is possible that a passenger may get stuck in the freight or passenger elevator. You must know how to communicate from the intercom to the elevator cars. The person in the elevator most likely does not have any training on the building systems, so you must keep them calm and ensure them help is on the way. Use the two-way elevator intercom to get as much information as possible as to who they are and what floors they may be stuck in between. 
you must also know the location of all emergency exit and access stairways. You must know the re-entry floors as you may guide people from floors. In an emergency you may have to do a partial or a full building evacuation. This is why the inspections, testing and maintenance is so important should something need to be report to be fixed before an emergency. As the FLSD you are responsible to conduct the required training and drills. There shall be initial training and annual training. You should focus on making it fun and engaging for all so they know what to do in an emergency. You should know the audience as you may have groups who may be younger or older, or English as a second language. You may also have CEOs or manager who may not want to take part, but they are required to. You must document all who took part and anyone who refused. Every building is unique, and as the FLSD your main job is to know all the parts of the fire protection system, floors, stairwells, elevators, re-entry floors, and building utilities. As the FLSD, you should memorize the four emergency action steps. What? Where? What? Why? What has occurred? Where it has occurred? What part of the plan are you implementing, and why? The why is simple, you are implementing the plan for the tenant's safety. Two main things you need to know is the emergency incident inside the building or outside the building. You want to ensure that you make your announcement clear and slowly so everyone can hear, then repeat it again. The on-site exam consists of 11 sections and will be administered by the following order. Section 1, Building Portion General Building Knowledge. Section 2, Building Portion Building Knowledge Related to Fire Safety. Section 3, Building Portion Building Knowledge Related to Comprehensive Plan. Section 4, FLS Staff Training. Section 5, Building Occupants Training for Active Shooter Incident. Section 6, A 30 Minutes Break. Section 7, Fire Scenarios. Section 8, Building Scenarios. Section 9, Non-Fire Scenarios. Section 10, Demonstration Portion Fire Command Center. Section 11, Demonstration Portion Elevator Procedures. These sections are divided into three components. General Building Knowledge Component, Fire Component, and the Non-Fire Component. We know things change and emergencies can happen at any time. We are happy to assist you in this process. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our page. Feel free to check our website for more courses at www.guardiangroupservices.com. Good luck on your on-site exam, and keep on training!